Good morning, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to our live stream on the UCAS process. And we're going to cover a little bit of student life afterwards. Um, just before I introduce the team, my name is Henrik. I am a DMU graduate, so DMU alumni. I graduated myself from DeMonte University in 2017, and I studied human resource management. So please get involved. Any questions that you have about anything re regarding you know, DMU, any of the courses, uh, and any of the topics that we're going to be covering in the video today, please do fire away. Um, you will have a chat function that you can ask us those questions and we'll try to cover as many of those as we can. Um, you'll be with us for around an hour. So, you know, hopefully uh, you find this pretty insightful and we'll give you um, this information on um, results day, which obviously is fast approaching, clearing should be coming up afterwards. And then maybe some, you know, some tips how to stay motivated during the summer, um, especially during these pretty unique times. Um, so who should I pick on just to randomly throw into the stream? Morning, Faye, you okay? <laughs> morning, you did pick on me there. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. I did, yeah, sorry. Just wait everyone's morning. to me, so I'm a bit back. How are you today, you okay? I'm good, very good, thank you. Looking forward to um, explaining some of the next steps to students, particularly those who aren't sure what they want to do yet or haven't applied to university for this September. So hopefully we'll have some interesting information and advice today. Cool. Do you remember when you opened your results on results day? No, it was that long ago. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that Actually, wasn't like a, I was going <laughs> to dig it at age or anything, but you know. <laughs> um, actually, you know, it was, um, I remember the postman came and that's actually how I found out. I had my letter from the university on results day before I even went to my sixth form to collect my results. So um, at that point I was like, who cares what I got in my A-levels? I got in, yay! Obviously it does matter, <laughs> but at yeah. the time I was just <laughs> so happy. So hopefully, you know, fingers crossed that's gonna be the situation for lots of viewers today. Definitely, and we'll touch on some of our own personal experiences um, when it came to open those, whether they were good, bad, what we expected, you know, maybe, well, you know, maybe our contingency plan, that kind of thing. Um, and I will now introduce Jamie. Morning. How are you? I am you good. Okay? <laughs> yeah. I hope you're going to ask me about my, my results day. It was in black and white, the summer of 1954. <laughs> I remember it well, you know. Um, I think the important thing for everyone watching today, today is the launch of clearings. The 6th of July, UCAS officially launched their clearing process. So 
this is the day from which you can get in touch with universities and get your offer. So a really, really important day in the diary. People always think clearing starts on results day. Clearing starts now and results day is the sort of pinnacle point of it. But if you're looking to tap into the market early and get advantage, getting into the universities from now till results day really is the window to do it. Cool. Thank you, Jamie. Dalva? Good morning, Henrik. How are you? Not too bad. I mean, we're all locked in Leicester. I think it was three, aren't we? So as good as we can be at the moment. See, you I haven't bet. got those <laughs> issues. <laughs> I'm enjoying my freedom while it's still last. There's no one going to be locked in than Leicester. I tell you, if you're going to be locked in, <laughs> Leicester is the place. If I was to write a list right. of places to be locked, just behind the Caribbean, I'd put Leicester. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to go for a haircut and you know whatever, but never mind. Uh, so, so obviously we're the we're the school and college uh, team here at DMU. We're also joined by two recent graduates. We'll be able to give you a pretty authentic, you know, opinion on De Montfort. So, Tierney, morning. Morning. How are you doing? I'm good. I got out of Leicester a couple of weeks ago, so I'm st I've got my relative freedom down here in London. Pretty oh, happy. You're in London. Okay, cool. So you're living living your normal life. Fair enough. I'm very living jealous. And uh, your results days this week, right? Yeah, I find out. I think my grades on Wednesday. Okay, I'm good very luck. I did. Thank you. Good luck. Wish you all the best of luck. And same for you, Leone. Are you okay? Yeah. Thanks, you. Not too bad. Not too bad. So yeah, your results day as well this week. How are you feeling? But no, I'm sure I'll be fine. <laughs> I'm sure you're both absolutely I'm smashing it. So. Are you in Leicester yourself at the moment, or are you no? Uh, I actually got home the day that Leicester went into lockdown. It wasn't oh, planned. Really it just so happened that that was when my tenancy ended. Um, so I made it home just in time, really. <laughs> and where's home for you? Uh, actually, Guernsey in the Channel Islands. So are you I'm not... you're fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're... almost. <laughs> I've got two weeks to spend in my room, um, but I'm a week through that now. So nearly free. Oh, you having? What you're having to, yeah. So, because I've come somewhere that has lock uh, has coronavirus still, I've had to quarantine on my own away from everyone. So, oh, I mean, no. it'll be all right soon because then I'll be completely free. <laughs> oh, no, okay. So, I didn't realize. Okay, well, yeah, that's the scene, guys. You've got so, awesome we, company. We... what more could you want? You know, life, life, I is know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, I think we'll um, we'll make a start. So, I believe Jamie. Mm -hmm. You're going to give us a little bit of a a briefing on sort of where we are now in the actual cycle, if you don't mind. Is that okay? Absolutely, Henry. Yes. Cool. Okay. I'll let you take that away. Thanks very much. So where are we now? It's the 6th of July. And university term at DMU starts. <laughs> university term in DMU starts on the 5th of October. So we're only three months away from the full teaching and learning starting on the campus. So everything starts ramping up faster and faster and faster from here. So a lot of people watching this, if you're looking to start university in 2020, most of you will have been through that UCAS process already. You have done your research last year, maybe gone to open days, got hold of your prospectus, you would have put your applications in in the autumn term, picked your five choices on your form, then you will have spent the early part of the spring working out which ones you wanted to go to, getting your offers back in. You might have got five offers, you might have had four offers plus an unsuccessful, but then you've got this pot of people that want you. You've then been through the process of working out where you want to go, you've got your firm, you've got your insurance, you're good to go. So most people will have been through that plan A and right now will sit on a firm choice. But also there'll be another group of people who perhaps haven't applied through UCAS at all yet. They've thought about it, they've chatted about it, but haven't necessarily done it. And clearing, which launches, as I mentioned today, is something, again, that you can start from scratch. So you don't have to be in UCAS to apply to university this year. You can come in as a completely new applicant and get in touch that way. The third group of people are people who've been through the process, done that research, got their firm, but maybe you're thinking, hmm, is the course I want to go? Is the university I want to go to? Are they actually still the correct choices for me? You might have changed your mind. Again, there's a chance to use this window now to change your mind through the process. So it's been a long journey so far for those of you who are in year 13 starting university this year. Three months left until term starts. Still lots and lots of chances to get offers, chances to change your mind if you need to do, both in terms of university and course, and chances to come in from scratch if you haven't got a UCAS application already in the bag. 
But what you do need to do from this point onwards is start moving relatively quickly. Don't sit on your hands at this time of year. Don't kind of let time tick, 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 tick. If you're someone who needs to change their mind, get an application in or um, aren't holding offers at the minute, this next month is your ideal window to do it. The later you leave it, the more competitive it becomes, the tougher it's going to be to get yourself an offer. So definitely my top tip is start moving and making those dynamic decisions now do not leave it over the next month or two months and if you think clearing something you might need jump into it now rather than wait until results date when we get literally thousands and thousands of incoming calls so definitely be proactive and move fast is my top tip back to you in your beautifully curtained studio henrik <laughs> In parents house thank you jamie great stuff um i guess just to open up to the team has anybody been through clearing themselves so has anyone actually got experience of, sort of what clearing is before we go into greater detail of that i did um you did i cool. i did yeah in on my results day i didn't i checked my ucash track in the morning didn't get the uni my first my firm choice so I went into school got my results came home then had a bit of a think and my insurance choice, they had accepted me and I kind of shot myself in the foot and decided to completely not want to go to my insurance choice and chose DMU instead. So I had to get myself a lease for my second from my insurance, get through, go through DMU to clear in, get my verbal confirmation, get confirmation that I was sending that uni and then had to go through the whole accommodation process. With that, it was a bit of a stressful couple of days, but it was just something I had to do. And how did you find the process in, in general? I think because I was so stressed out of, because of my results and so like, upset about my results, I put a lot more stress on myself than that was needed. But the actual process itself was quite easy. You just call up, get your confirmation, got myself. The only bit of stress I had was getting myself released from my other uni. But I think now you can release yourself. So if I did it now, it'd be like plain sailing, plain sailing all the way through. Yeah, I mean, I guess for the rest of us guys, we've all worked clearing, haven't we? We did it last year. Um, we can also appreciate how sort of manic the day is and how stressful it can be for the students. You know, it's either going to be, you know, one of the best days or potentially, you know, the worst, that kind of thing. So, um, I mean, yeah, I guess, Faye, would you like to talk us through what clearing is exactly? And I guess maybe how clearing isn't always seen as a bad thing or, you know, maybe clearing isn't always for students that maybe didn't um quite get the grades you know the other other options there are within clearing as well you okay to do that yeah I mean as you can see for Tierney it, it worked out really positive for her oh sorry for that. <laughs> there we go um, and <laughs> it worked out really positive for Tierney so you know it's it's <laughs> Okay, let's not touch any more buttons. I'm on the screen. <laughs> um, Monday morning, you know how it is. So um, clearing itself, I have no idea what I got asked now, but uh, you can see that Tierney had a really, you know, has now had a positive experience. I've spoken to her on many occasions where, you know, yes, at the time it was, was a scary situation to be in and not knowing what you were going to do. Um, where you were going to do but sometimes these things end up working out for a reason and sometimes they can really um, work out for the best as well so um, you know do that do bear that in mind there's people like myself who you know I've supported students throughout clearing for the last five years you know we're there to help you so do call you know universities chat to people chat to as many people as you need to uh, to start making those really important decisions and find out those next steps um, so that's just something to consider and don't want to jump into anything as well you know you can always sleep on things have a think about it um chat to your parents chat, chat to your sixth form go and you know speak to you speak to your tutor if you can or if there's a careers advisor at your sixth form or fe college or if you're an independent person you know you have you're not at the college right now you, know, you can speak to us and we'll do our best to to support you and make sure that you know your choices are you know, you're going down the right track um, with your choices as well. So uh, thousands of students go through clearing every year. So, you know, it's something that we're very much aware of and know how to support you. Um, if you haven't previously made an application, something to bear in mind um, is that you still need to register with UCAS. Uh, you still need to, you know, pop your details into there. 
pop in your your qualifications you need to get a reference still as well so as part of your application you need something to back up you know who you are what you're saying as well uh, that can be again if you're not from sixth form or fe college at the moment it could be somebody you know who knows you person personally it could be in a work capacity somebody who who knows and can comment on the kind of skills um, that you have so you will need to have a UCAS ID by registering as well um, so that's kind of how it how it works in a bit of a nutshell for, for clearing um, again if you are holding firm a firm choice and insurance choice you can still call universities and make inquiries particularly if you haven't chosen DMU um, you know again just having those conversations is really really important back to the studio. Here we come. Hello, we lost Henrik. We have, we, either that or he's turned the lights out. <laughs> <laughs> he's closed the curtains on yeah, the yeah. screen. They are blooming good curtains, aren't they? I tell you, blackout blind. <laughs> Does anyone remember their own results day? Because results day, there's certain days in your life, I reckon, that, that results day, your wedding day, the, maybe in my case, the day I had the first child, the certain days you always remember. Has anyone got any good results day anecdotes they want to tell us about? What? How did your results day go down? Positive, negative, stressful, relaxed? I know yours was relaxed, Alec. I can see you're about to tell us. <laughs> it's, it's on the tip of my tongue, so I'm just going to get it out there. See, mine was plain sailing, so... I pretty much knew what I was working towards, pretty much achieved what I got. So I think by a couple of hours later, half past 10, quarter to 11, we'd cracked open uh, the orange aid, shall we say. And that was it. The rest of the day was, uh, I, I cannot actually remember. So, well, I don't really want to be saying it on a live stream at 17 minutes past 11, what happened for the remainder of the day. But yeah, it was, uh, it was all good stuff. You see, this is the happy path. That's what you want. So ideally, you want to be in Dell's position. What we're conscious of with lots of you guys watching is if you're in year 13 this year, you've not actually had a chance to take your exams. Therefore, you've not quite had control of your own destiny, the same as people have done for years and years and years. So you might be slightly nervous thinking about, oh, these, these predicted grades is going to happen. Are they going to be positive? Are they going to be optimistic? Are they going to be pessimistic? So what you guys might want to do is work on a plan B. My results day didn't go down quite as smoothly as, um, as Dell's one. So my firm choice rang me up and offered me an alternative course. They offered me agricultural economics rather than economics. And I kind of panicked and pictured myself working on a farm. So I declined that, <laughs> went to my insurance choice, which was a business and marketing degree, which didn't involve farming in any way, shape or form. But just like Tierney mentioned, I had to clear myself from my first accommodation at University One, get my deposit back, browse the accommodation for University Two and get myself sorted. And even though I got an insurance choice, I don't think I actually really, really visualised myself going to it. You know, so it was a big, big change. Anybody else? How did your results? Anyone else have the happy path like Dell? Or did you all have slightly more <laughs> rocky roads? Mine was pretty good. I was, I think mean, I put a lot of pressure on myself to get certain grades, even though I'd got an unconditional. So I knew I was still being able to come to DMU, um, no matter what happened on results day. But because of all the time that you spent over two years of working towards the exams, I got myself stressed up. So I got my envelope and couldn't open it for about 15 minutes and just crying. Um, that's just because I stress about things too much. So if you can try and not stress about it, obviously that's difficult. Um, then you probably have an easier day. Um, because I got stressed for no reason and then once I opened it I cried again because I was so happy with my results <laughs> and then I had a good day after that there wasn't any more tears but yeah it was just I think I put too much pressure on the grades that were going to come out even though I knew I was still going to be able to go where I was going so if you can try and not put too much pressure on the results you'll still get to where you want to go um, and hopefully things won't end in loads of tears. <laughs> And if you are sick of an unconditional offer, if your letter says from DMU, unconditional, as mm. the learner says, genuinely, that means that regardless of what's in that envelope, you know, you hope you hope the envelope's going to contain what you want it to contain, but regardless of what's in it, your unconditional offer is as it says on the tin, mm. and you will be able to come and start with us this September. So obviously you want your grades to be good, but don't worry that in that situation, they're going to mean you can or can't go. Unconditional genuinely is as it sounds. Yeah. Yeah, how about yours, Henrik and Faye? Did you go to, to plan A, the smooth, happy path, or? 
or not quite? Uh, not, not really, to be honest. Mine was a bit of a, a bit of a weird one. Yeah, so I didn't get into my first choice. Um, so I went to my insurance choice originally. Um, and then I studied at my insurance choice for two years. And then I decided that institution and that course wasn't for me. So I actually left and then reapplied to DMU a couple of years later myself. Um, so I think for me, if I was to give any sort of advice, it would just be just to think about, you know, r- really long and hard what you want to do. Um, for me personally, when it came to results day, you know, way back when, um, I'd have, I'd have, I probably should have reset my A-levels at that point. Uh, but there was a lot of pressure that year. It was in the last year where the fees were 3,300 before they wow. increased and a lot of my friends were going and that kind of thing. So there was a lot of pressure to go. I didn't really want to go to my insurance choice, but it just felt like the right thing to do at the time. But I mean, I don't want to see it as a mistake, but, you know, more of like a, a learning curve, that kind of thing. So I just say, just have a long, hard think about about, about what you want to do, really, and that kind of thing. So um, obviously, it worked out really well in the end. Had an amazing time at DMU. Uh, graduated a couple of years ago. Um, you know, should have gone to TMU from the start, really. But, you know, who'd have uh, who'd have known that would have been a good good option until you're there, I well, guess. So. Take that as the quote of the day. Should have gone to DMU <laughs> from the start, you see. We'll post that out in the comments, you know. Bear that there one you go. <laughs> Shameless How plug. Was yours, eh? was yours? I think, I mean, I didn't sleep the night before. So now for anybody who is sitting A-levels, you get your results on the Thursday. So the 13th, is it the 12th, 13th? 13th of August. Uh, it's not a Friday, so that's good. And um, UCAS, <laughs> not mine, <laughs> UCAS updates from about eight o'clock. UCAS crack, you can log in. Whose alarm's going off? Who isn't out of bed yet? <laughs> I wish it was 9 11 22. Oh, <laughs> my mum left her phone in the lounge. It's, it's all, oh. it's all <laughs> going wrong today. <laughs> Answer the phone, Henrik. <laughs> um, we'll take the call um, live. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm talking about. So yeah, so eight o'clock UCAS track should um should update. Just bear in mind that I think there is around about is it between seven hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand people um coming who start university. So there'll be lots and lots of people logging on to UCAS track. So do be aware that it can crash. Um and it might be that you can actually call your firm or perhaps even your insurance, if you call your firm first, to find out whether you have gotten in. Um, it was a bit different back in the day when I was going to universities, um, and I had to I had to go and collect um, my results as well from sixth form. It might be different this year, so find out from your sixth form if they haven't told you already, if you need to go and collect your results, um, how is that going to work, or are they going to email it, for example? Somebody has posted in the comments, that they're getting their results um, by email. So I'm sure um, if you are attending sixth form at FD College, they'll be letting you know shortly. Mm. Do you know what we did with my results? They literally posted the results of every single student openly on the wall in the school. So the first Ooh. time you got out, the first time you saw what you got was standing next to your mates, finding your surname on this big, long alphabetical list. Apparently, it was designed as a motivational technique because you knew the fear of like public shaming if you'd done badly. <laughs> <laughs> they would have worked really, really hard. But it was, I remember it was like really quite. So if someone's melting down, they melt down in full view of the world. It was quite emotional. Did you know yeah. this was a thing before results day or did uh, you drop it on yeah, you? Yeah, I think so. But I don't think I really kind of visualized it until it came to it on the day. I mean, it was like, oh, crikey, this is a bit raw. It really yeah. was. Sounds like something from a horror movie. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to put blogging, absolutely. Um, we've had a comment, haven't we, from. Um, sort of, um, what's it, Humium, um, talking about, um, can you go back to a course that you've rejected? I suspect this one might mean, so what I'm, what I'm visualising here is, is that it's applied to five different courses, has picked the firm and the insurance, and then there's three courses at that point that have been declined, and I think decline is probably the correct term here. Um, you can potentially go back to one of those ones that you've declined, and you can get a verbal offer from that university from today, but you can't actually add that choice on your UCAS, your UCAS whilst you're holding other offers. You'd need to release yourself from your firm and your insurance before you can actually pick up that choice. But you can genuinely go back in, and assuming it's available in clearing, you can go back in and get an offer there. So yes, you can theoretically. Mm. Right, what are we on to next? Anything else we need to talk about on clearing and results day? Maybe some top tips on what you should do for results day. 
I'd say get a good night's sleep, with, but that's yeah. not guaranteed. Start with Lurnie and Tierney because their results stay are the, the most recent and vivid memories. What are your thoughts? <laughs> things maybe you did amazingly and you want to share those amazing things or things you wish you'd done subtly differently or things maybe you've heard about your mates or everyone has a mate who melts down on results day and disappears for a week. Any tips? I did. I, I think when he disappeared for a week. So you go. <laughs> I think something that's quite good to do is to make plans with your friends in the afternoon because generally you get your results in the morning. Obviously, you may not be able to make in-person plans this year, but even if that's like a video call or something, um, because if it's in the afternoon, then people have a bit of time to celebrate with their family or maybe get their head around what they need to be doing next if they need them to go through clearing. But then it means you've all got something to look forward to and something to celebrate, um, which is probably quite good if if things haven't quite gone as planned um but equally it means you get your celebration if you if you've done really well i think something else actually that's um quite important is maybe to try and um what do you call it not compare results too much because otherwise people may be feeling bad because maybe they haven't done quite as well or you may then feel worse about your results which you shouldn't be feeling worse about your results because someone else has maybe done better um, but yeah, try not to compare, which can be really difficult because I'm a person to compare quite a lot. But if you try and avoid that, that's really quite good. <laughs> I agree. And Tierney? I would say prep for like all sort of occasions. So I didn't know I'd be going through clearing. And so therefore I had like no idea what clearing is. So I think just go, knowing the process of clearing before and if you have to go through it, like know what it is because that would be really useful and also just sort of just take a minute to like be proud of yourself that you've gotten through a levels which is a really big thing to get through especially at the moment so be proud that you've done as well as you have definitely i think i think that plan b if you can visualize if if i don't go to firm choice make sure the insurance is genuinely one you have researched and are comfortable going to if you don't get into the firm and insurance, just as Tony says, have that alternative plan up your sleeve. Are there certain universities and certain courses I quite fancy? What is the process for going to them? Can I get the phone numbers handy? And you hope that's a couple of hours of work you're going to never need. You hope yeah. you get into your firm, your insurance, you rip up that paper, recycle it productively, and then that's it. You're off having your celebration <laughs> like Dell did. But if you do need it, having done the research in advance, it's loads easier. To make those rapid decisions when you've just had the disappointment of not getting the results and not getting into your firm, you're not necessarily thinking rationally. Whereas if you've done that legwork, the planning then becomes your comfort blanket and allows mm. you to then move on more productively. Because clearing is a massive opportunity. There's loads and loads of spaces, but they do genuinely, in some cases, particularly on competitive courses, disappear quite quick. So I had a mate who I, I had more than one mate, but I had one mate I'm talking about. I, 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 um, I had, he literally, he, he, he was named and shamed on the board for not getting a grade he wanted. I think he got, he, he got something that might have spelled dead, but without the A in it. Um, and he um, genuinely ran out, of, ran out of school, obviously not wanting to appear emotionally in front of his mates, jumped into his car, which was an Austin Allegro, not a very stylish car either. So it was already on a, <laughs> a bad day. We all spun turn out the car park, handbrake turned around a corner and was gone in a cloud of dust. And we didn't see him for like five days. And by the time he resurfaced, all the courses he wanted were no longer there. Whereas if he collected himself a bit quicker, got himself organised and got on the phone, he could genuinely have got a really good course at a really, really good uni. So my top tip is don't do a mat, don't panic, don't handbrake turn out the car park do keep composed, do be planned, and then it will turn out positively, regardless of how badly it starts, the day will hopefully end on a positive, is my top tip. Anything from yourself, Diala, that obviously your top tip's gonna be, make sure you're the happy path is what comes into play. Yeah, so for me, it's just don't stress. I mean, Lerna hit the nail on the head, I think, when she was talking <laughs> about it. You, you spend two years of your life, probably longer because a lot of people also use their GCSEs as well is as a build-up to go on to mm -hmm. their A-levels so you've put so much time and effort in and yes on one hand it's quite daunting that oh my god just in case I don't get what I expected or what I achieved but on the other hand you've got to cut yourself a bit of slack like you would have tried your hardest in most cases and that's all literally you can do so 
for me, myself, personally, that's all I tell myself. As long as I've tried my hardest, it doesn't really matter what this piece of paper is going to say because there's nothing else that I could have done on top. And when you look at like the, the facilities or the software, such as going through clearing, you will always have the second chance to go to university. So it's not going to be the be all and end all. Yeah, it's probably might not be a case of it's your firm choice or it's your insurance choice, but you still have another opportunity to go and study on the course that you want to do. You still be able to go into the career or the field that you want to go into. So really on one hand, I understand the stress, but on the other hand, one thing that I would say to you is, guys, please just chill out, relax. It's really not, the end of the world no matter how bad it might seem look Tian is sitting here living proof with us she's gonna get her results today or tomorrow I'm sure she's gonna go off into the career that she wants to go into and I'm sure if we rewind four or five years ago she too would have been panicking thinking oh my god everything's gonna finish today nothing's ever gonna go right for me so we've got living proof with Tony on the, the the screen with us today yeah and you know you said about working hard I had a mate, this is the second of my three mates, um, and he, <laughs> he genuinely didn't work hard. He he boozed his way through his A-levels, he worked a lot of hours um, part-time and didn't focus that much on his studies. And results day for him was a mare, because he went into it knowing he'd not worked hard and studied hard, and knowing his results would reflect that. And they really did reflect that. But his learning from the day was, is I never want to be in that position again when I know I've not committed myself to something and I know that the output of it is going to be less than I could have got. So he got a place through clearing, regrouped and changed his mindset completely, got a two one in his degree and now has a really, really high powered job. You know, so so sometimes even a bad outcome based on in some ways a performance when you know you've not committed can also be a big learning curve as well. So as Dell says, do not stress and take the positives and the learning from it regardless of the outcome. Any tips from yourself, Faye? I know we've got contact details to bring up to people as well because it's really important that people do get in touch for support, for guidance. So we'll bring on the WhatsApp and the phone number onto the screen shortly so you can actually see how to get in touch. And potentially, by contacting us on WhatsApp and the phone, you can actually get your offer live today. So it's not just ring up for a chat, it's ring up to potentially get a verbal offer which gives you that backup plan immediately in your bag by the end of play today. There we go. So that's the phone number and the WhatsApp number is on there as well. Whichever platform you prefer, they'll get back to you really, really quickly and have a really informal chat. Any yeah. tips from you, Faye, on clearing before we move on to talk about sort of what happens afterwards, which is the exciting uni experience itself? I think we had a really good question. So if I keep doing this, I'm looking at the comments. We had a really good question actually about accommodation. Um, so obviously this is a lot, uh, I would imagine a lot of people's concerns when it comes to going through clearing or, you know, changing your mind if you already have an offer, for example, thinking, well, hang on a second, um, I don't have accommodation sorted and I want to move away from home. So this is a really good question. Um, do speak to universities. We um, have, for example, ourselves have lots of accommodation available. Um, I believe we are once again. Um, guaranteeing accommodation for first year students. So if you are in a position where you do come to us through clearing or for perhaps where your insurance choice, you end up coming through as, as, as an insurance choice, we do have accommodation available. So something I think to just uh, a bit of a weight lifted off your shoulders, I think there, something to know that you will have a place to live. Definitely, but I think, I think again, it's sooner rather than later. If, you, if we are your firm choice, and you know you're going to come to us in September, and you know you need to move from home, then it makes sense to look at the accommodation as soon as you can, because the sooner you do it, the more choice you've got. There'll always be accommodation. A bit like booking your holidays. The later you book the holiday, the less choice you've got about hotels. Same principle with accommodation. The earlier you book it, the more choice there is, the more you can get the bespoke room, the bespoke building in the right location, the right price that you want to have. The closer the term starts, Yes, there'll still be accommodation, but you'll have a few less options in terms of which one you choose. We've got another question popped up here. 
can we only get a verbal offer after results day? You can get a verbal offer literally right now. So by calling that phone number that Faye put on the screen, the 0116 257 7000, or hitting us up with a message on the WhatsApp number, you can have a conversation leading to a verbal offer from today onwards. And verbal offers and clearing will be open right up until the middle of September. But it is a marketplace. It is at its most vibrant now. So right now, with clearing launching today, there are the most places that there will be on board. As we get to results day and then beyond results day, those number of places will slowly contract until by mid-September, there will only be a few courses left that aren't completely full. So if you know you might need a verbal offer, either as a backup plan because you've not applied already, or because you're changing your mind or hard holding offers, then get in touch from today and you can get that offer and have it there as a massive reassurance piece, knowing it's there if you need it. Thank you. Shall we shall we go into the actual more practical preparation for universities? So let's assume now, because it's only three months away, so we want to start talking about clearing and UCAS is all kind of theoretical and about the application process, which actually makes the whole thing sound like one big piece of bureaucracy. But in reality, you're three months away, literally this week from term starting and you being there, meeting people, experiencing things. And whilst we know the COVID situation means that this autumn term is going to be a little bit different to normal, we're still hoping the experience can be as face to face as possible. So we want to talk a bit about preparation for university and again i think we can lead with um learning and tierney here because again your experience is, is really hot off the press recent experience what top tips would you give to folk before they start university in terms of preparation be it practical be it planning be it financial whatever you think is relevant i think something that i didn't do enough of was tips and recipes from my mum because I wasn't the most experienced cook when I went to uni. So I was just cooking like pasta, basic things um, most days. And it wasn't until I got to my final year when one of my housemates was quite sort of experimental with food um, that I started to maybe have more exciting meals. So if you can sort of take a note of some of your favorite recipes that your mum makes, um, or like maybe when your parents are cooking in the evenings, go and cook with them. Um, then that's something that will be really beneficial and you'll probably appreciate yourself for in the future um, when your housemates are just there having pasta and cheese and you're there having this like gourmet curry that you've made or um, this like five course meal because you know how to do it all. <laughs> Sounds good to me. We're around to learn it for dinner later. <laughs> <laughs> Although it could be a tricky one to pop round, couldn't it, given you're on the channel? Yeah. <laughs> I like the idea. And the person who can cook is always a certain celebrity within the hall. You can gain a certain popularity yeah. by cooking some fine dishes, which I wasn't one of those people. But, you know, <laughs> I'm sure conceptually you could do that. Tony, yeah. how about yourself? What would your top tips of prep for uni be? Oh, um, I, I was always really concerned with my social life when I went to uni. I'm quite a social person. And like when I'm down here at home, like I've got a lot of friends that I see and I wanted to replicate that up at uni. So I would just I had a look at all of the sports and societies that the dean offered and sort of decided the ones that I wanted to go through first. So I like followed them on Instagram. They were, most of the sports and societies have like pages. They will have Facebook groups. So I joined all of them and joined my accommodations Facebook group and tried to find people who were in my flat. And I literally would just message everyone who was doing my course, who lived in my flat and was sort of doing things that I was really interested in just to like sort of be able to go and have a coffee with someone when I first met have someone to sit with when I was in my first lectures like one of my best friends to this day I met her at my society's welcome drink although she didn't end up joining the society we found out we were doing the same course we met we met the next week and went to our first lectures together and then we had every single lecture together and most of our seminars together for the rest of the year so I saw her pretty much every day just because of I messaged her on Facebook and I met her at the society drink and that's how I found one of my really good friends so just sort of message everyone that you want to. Everyone's going to be in the same boat as you. Everyone's going to be going to uni. Probably, most of these people probably also won't know anyone else. So yeah, just have a message to say, hey, my name's not Tierney, but my name's Tierney. <laughs> I saw you're interested in this. Do you want to go for a coffee when we get back get to Leicester? And just nine times out of 10, it'll be a yes. If it's a no, then it's a no. You just move on to the next person. So you're suggesting that people should almost get involved now. So rather yeah. than wait until term starts and you're there and turn 100%. up knowing nobody and start with a blank canvas, 
use the social media, use the Facebook groups, use the Instagram groups to get chatting to people who have got like-minded interests. And then when you turn up, I imagine it's going to be a lot less daunting if you can visualize other people who are going to the same mm. place doing the same thing. And you've got a couple of like appointments for a coffee or a, yeah. or a beer or a slice of cake or whatever it may be. I imagine that makes it a lot less intimidating. Daunting. Hmm. I would get lost on, my, on the way to my lectures in my first year. I did it in my third year as well. But especially in first year, you just get lost all the time. And if you get lost when you're with someone else, it's not as bad. If you walk hmm. into a lecture late with someone else, it's like, just got lost together it's okay yeah just, just <laughs> mesh people people will always say yes oh it's a nice idea and our facebook group now the 2020 facebook group has got getting on for three thousand people in it all of whom are starters for this year so there are plenty of people who will be your friend in there and there's lots of open chat but also lots of subgroups based on as tierney says particular courses particular sports and interests people from particular towns all sorts of different things there's loads of ways of meeting people chatting reassuring each other and feeling part of the community before you even start absolutely any tips from yourself Dale, for prepping for university things they should be doing particularly if people have got their offer in the bag and they know what they're doing accommodation wise what else should they be thinking about planning and thinking see for me i'm going to take a quite nerdy approach being the the nerd that i am so I always like to prepare. So I remember when I went to university, after doing all of the stuff that uh, Leonie and Tierney spoke about, what I then did was I started to get ahead on the actual course itself. So I had a look at the course modules. I had a look at what I'm going to be studying within my first semester. Do I need to get any books? Do I need to, to do any reading prior to going? Me being the competitive soul that I am, I always like to set myself challenges. So for me, that transition from going from A-level to starting my degree, in my head, I imagined that, you know what, this is gonna be really difficult. So what I decided to do was just to make sure I was prepared for it, was to make sure I did the readings early. So prior to going to my first lecture, this sounds really sad, and it sounds like I didn't have much of a life, but I made sure I read up around all the different topics around the first couple of modules that I had in that semester. So for me, when I did my degree, I had four modules per semester. So that's from September to December. For each module, I had a look at the topics. I had a look at the strand. I had a look at the key reading because you can get all of that information once you've completed your enrollment. So then you know what you're what you're going to be having a look at because I wanted to get ahead, wanted to be a bit of a, a teacher's pet. And I feel like it worked really well because I, I made great relationships with my lecturers, with my tutors, because they could see that genuinely I had an interest and a passion for, for studying that subject. So that's something that I would recommend. And then when I, when I taught myself at my previous institution, I was very open to those sort of students. And as, a, as someone who, who's teaching, I was just like, you know what, you can actually see that these students genuinely do have a passion. And it just it's a great way to build those relationships early if you have that sort of in the bank back to you jamie tell you if we metamorphosize you three into one person we'd have something of a dream dream item here so <laughs> Dan would be all over the course he would have read every single textbook and pre-delivered all of his work Tierney would have a <laughs> social network set up in advance and learning would be the most popular person in halls because she's cooking these amazing meals sounds like a dream team what are you adding to the party Faye, in your preparation how are you making this single person when we're creating even more perfect by the time turn starts no pressure <laughs> mike oh i think probably looking back i mean i chose my um university very much based on looking at the social experience the kind of groups that i could join like freshers week what was going on what kind of societies clubs were available um even like what nights out kind of was offered by by the university by the different groups so uh you really put in studies first there <laughs> so uh, looking back though i started a brand new course at university something that i hadn't studied before and i do look back and think i really really should have prepped more i should have read some books before starting you know i did new kind of subject areas so i did languages and i picked up a new language but it wasn't just learning languages i also learned about history within different countries and also looked at things like literature and i hadn't done anything like literature since since secondary school so really like i should have been more like dal gotten a bit ahead of the game looked at the reading list and started kind of 
swatting up a little bit and uh, making sure that you know I was a bit more prepared for starting university but just bear in mind um, I think what was my saving grace was that university in first year you it doesn't count towards your overall grade so if you're moving away from home if it's a bit of a readjustment you know settling in um, you know if you don't do as well in your first year it doesn't count towards your overall grades you obviously have to pass it and get a certain uh, certain pass mark um, but your second or third year hopefully you have settled in realize what you were doing wrong what you need to do better and obviously come out with great results in your in your um in your degree sounds perfect we are creating this perfect applicant here aren't we you know yeah uh, i don't know we? about you go on Sorry, Joe. so with faye i would have suspected that faye was very 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 well organized i don't know about you jamie but given the way faye is as a person and how prepared she is as a person it's it's quite surprising right. that you wasn't that prepared at university ridiculous it's something that happened later on in life honestly when i just <laughs> looked back and thought the stress that I would have saved myself, uh, the grey hairs that wouldn't have started early. <laughs> so, uh, looking back, I think I think it's just throughout your your young years, your adolescence. You know, you learn you learn a lot, and you learn how to do things better. Even today, though, I still do some of the same things: creating spreadsheets. You know, create a spreadsheet of all the things that you need to take to university, so you don't get there, and you know, find that you can't go and buy, I don't know, mugs cutlery from the local tesco because everybody's bought them <laughs> so you're wondering how you're going to eat your pot noodle mm. you see i i'm not a natural kind of planner and organizer i find that sort of thing tedious i'm much more an adapter and a an evolver so i rocked up onto day one i got the basics i had got a, a knife fork and spoon a few other things that i know i was going to need but i hadn't really planned very much i went in there with a um I don't say no policy. So every single opportunity I was given, every single night out, every single, how about getting involved in this, coming along with that, talking to this person. My policy was, I'm going to say yes to everything for the first couple of months. Go to every society for the opportunity to, every night out, every study related piece, get to know everybody. And then as time goes on, I'll start to pick and choose and pull back to the stuff I know I really like and the people I really want to hang out with. So I very much had an open door policy. The one thing I did do in advance was bake some biscuits. Well, I lie. I brought some biscuits my mum had baked. That's not quite the same thing, is it? <laughs> and I knocked on all the doors in the four floors of my building. So there were four floors of six, six guys on ground floor, six guys on the floor above, and then six girls on each of the two floors above that. So there were, so Jimmy mathematically calculated this, 24 people, I got there in the end, in the building. So I made this whole box of biscuits, knocked on all the doors, and got to know people, breaking the ice with a takey, tasty, homemade, though not by me, though I didn't tell them that, chocolate chip cookie. And that went down really well. Just being proactive and just engaging with everybody was good. And it was good fun as well. See, so yeah, we're all jealous. Secretly, we wish that we were you coming into the start of the university. You know, these girls are going off to like the serious work that will be another like Aww. 50 years <laughs> of your life till you lot retire. You know, we are <laughs> in that work scenario now. Whereas you guys in year 13, I've got the beautiful experience of your university life right there over the crest of the next hill. And genuinely, everybody who does our job and talks about it, a small part of us really wishes we could go back and, and have that all again. All over again. I don't know if we'd learn from our mistakes or not, or whether we'd just do the same thing all over nah. again. I like to think we might a little bit. You never know. Um, any top tips on accommodation, um, Tierney and Learning, in terms of how to make the most of that? What worked for you? What didn't? Things you might have done differently if you'd gone back again? Ooh. I'd like to throw these curveball questions in there. <laughs> I think something that's quite good is to, if you can't go and visit your accommodation beforehand, which might be quite difficult at the moment, is try and find videos online of it. So the university might have videos of their accommodations or um, students that have already been there might have like filmed vlogs of like, this is my room tour. Um, because if you know sort of what your accommodation is gonna look like, you can plan, I'm quite like, I like organizing my room, making it look all nice. Um, not that you can tell because I've got my childhood moon lamp in the corner. Um, but I liked being able to look at what the room was going to be like and plan what decorations I was going to take so that when I was going there, I knew that I would have enough fairy lights to fit around my room um, and I'd have enough space to put all my photos and things. So I think 
preparing how you can maybe make that room homely and how you can make it yours is something that I quite enjoyed doing um, before I went and was something that I'm quite glad I did because it meant that when I got there, it wasn't as difficult to make the room my own. It, it sort of just slotted into place from how I planned it in my mind. I think that's a really big tip, actually, because these university halls, they can be a little bit bland when you first come in. You've got your small mm. wooden desk. You've got your standard university curtains you've got a rather sort of neutral carpet and it's not very exciting and I took nothing so my room felt very I don't know just completely bland and it felt quite an alienating environment when I did my biscuit tour some particularly some of the girls <laughs> on the top floors they genuinely by three o'clock in the afternoon on day one they, they looked like they'd been in this room for years because every single thing was got their own rugs the pictures were on the wall they got the lights round they got their own even I mean sort of smellies and little candles and that so I do think that's a really important thing to avoid any homesickness and to make it feel like home from home taking your personal stuff and planning how you'll make it look is a really important way to bridge the gap that's a good tip how about you Tierney you've had plenty of time to think about this now <laughs> I have I am um, I'd say evaluate your priorities so do you care about having your own bathroom or that like, do you care about having a big room so I have a lot of clothes and like, I mean a lot, like I have two wardrobes I've signed me here. And I needed a big room because I had my um, own little like clothing rail as well. Cause university wardrobes are usually really small and I couldn't deal with that. So I bought my own. So I needed a big room to have that clothing rail and because I wanted a bigger room. I couldn't necessarily have like my own bathroom. So I was like, what do I care more about? Like having my own toilet or having like my own clothes. So I had to sort of pick and choose the things I cared I wanted more. But I mean, lots of people are different. So, lots of my friends had their own en suites because they cared about having their own private bathroom more. So, when I went around their flats, it was the best because I had a, their bathroom to use. So, just evaluate your priorities more. Do you care about having, like, having your room cheaper and, like, living in a bigger flat with, like, sharing bathrooms, sharing kitchens? Or do you care about having your own space? Just sort of figure out your priorities and don't just necessarily go for the cheapest accommodation or the most expensive. Just figure out which, which, which one is right for you. Great people do obsess with the ensuite these days. I think they sort of mm. can't visualize it. Whereas very, very few people in their parents' home have got their own bathroom per person, <laughs> but somehow at university it feels different. I guess it's because they're strangers you're living with, but mm. yeah, you're right. The ones that don't have ensuite, the rooms are about half again as big, so there's loads more space to kind of spread out and have sort of again more of a homely setup in there. Good tip, Bay and Dell. Anything to add on accommodation? See, I can't really comment. So first year I stayed at home, second and third wow. year I sofa surfed, you know? So when I couldn't be bothered to drive back home or commute, I'd just crash at a friend's house. So for me, accommodation was a bit different. I didn't really know where I was sleeping day to day. It was a case of, right, lads, who's got space on the sofa? Can I, <laughs> am I okay to crash? I'll buy you a Chinese pizza or whatever it might be. You feel you're I didn't re by by not moving into halls, or do you find that you're able to still get the sort of the student lifestyle you were looking for? Because it's very much yes. a choice, isn't it? It is. It is. So, like, my first year was definitely different compared to my second and third year. First year, because I I was commuting into university, um, I felt like I couldn't get involved with the social side. So, and I feel like that reflected my choices. Like, remember, I said I, when I went to university, one of the first things that I did was prepare, read notes, everything. I felt like I was living in my own bubble compared to the rest of the students because the rest of the students were more interested in the freshers' life. There's more interested in the social events, whereas me. My first year, I find it I found it very difficult to strike that balance. So that's mm. why I decided to stay at home. But then on reflection at the end of my first year, I looked back at it and I thought, you know, what? I am missing out a lot on the social side. I am missing out on going out with my mates, having a good time. But I didn't want to take the cost on of accommodation. I did want the option to come home. I'd like to think I'm a very friend, a friendly person. So I thought, right, I'm going to make some nice friends and I'm going to see where I can crash here and there to try and get the best best of both worlds, then years two and three was a lot better for me because I felt like I, I could still concentrate really well because I had the opportunity to go home because I didn't have to stay in that university environment. So when there was assignments, when there was examinations coming up, I could totally remove myself because I'm not there. So then it gave me a great time to get my work done. But then the same way when it was student night, when there was a party going, I always had that opportunity to, to stay at someone's place or crash and get involved as well. But yeah, definitely, it does give two different 
types of experience 100 percent. and it all like, like you were saying it all goes down to the individual it's just whatever you want to get out of your university life for some students the the ideal of being able to go to these fresher events going out with the with your mates at university is really appealing for other people it might not be their cup of tea i think when you get any clearing offers it's important to think about that just what dal and tierney both said there which is work out what's important to you just because it's clearing doesn't mean you have to panic buy and get something you don't want you should still be able to get a course and a lifestyle and student experience that is something you'll look back on with you know with pride and pleasure rather than having to sort of grab something that's out there clearing isn't about panic buying anything it's about finding using it as a platform to find the right course for you how about your experience Faye? because you moved right from east coast to west coast didn't you so you, 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 I'm assuming you didn't commute daily. <laughs> oh, it would have been about three trains, about three and a half hours. So <laughs> Dal should have moved his lips then. It would have been very interesting. Um, yeah, it was, um, you know, I moved somewhere where, where I didn't know a single person, um, but being in accommodation. So I moved into halls of residence. So they were affiliated with the university. So if I had any problems, I had the support of the university. You know, if I wanted to move rooms, um, you know, I had even a kind of person within the halls that I could go to um, if there were any problems as well and speak to. So it was really nice. I met lots of friends. I met who was now my, my husband as well in halls of residence. And I just met lots of people. And then we decided... Um, you know, I did get involved a lot in the kind of social experience, but when in second and third year, I moved into student house houses with the people that I met in the halls of residence. And I think it was a lot more kind of scaled back, you know, probably had bigger rooms. It was kind of, you had less people maybe around you, so you could perhaps get on better with your with your studies. I guess it just depends who you live with, the kind of friends that you make. Um, but if I could go back and do it all, I wouldn't change it at all with my accommodation and stick in my halls, uh, meet the people um, and then take it from there. But definitely wouldn't be couch searching. I like my own space. I like to see how everything, you know, have all my, my toiletries lined out, my books all um, in one place. So, uh, yeah, definitely not the couch searching, uh, surfing for me. No. It is more about knowing yourself and knowing what you enjoy and making sure that all the choices you make feed in to those experiences. Um, there's a scheme set up at DMU this autumn called Your DMU Future, which is very much about how we make the experience as exciting as possible, given the current context of COVID-19. And that's going to be looking at how we actually integrate the Hall of Residence how much teaching is going to be on campus and face-to-face -face versus digital. It's safe to say there will be more digital learning than there normally is. So lectures, this is when you're potentially putting 300 people shoulder to shoulder in a lecture theatre, is clearly not going to be an appropriate thing to do through the autumn term, given social distancing and everything else. So the lectures will be online, but it's very much anticipated that tutorials, which is smaller, smaller classroom discussions, lab work or um health and science related courses workshop work for computing and engineering related courses and creative workshop space for art and design courses are all still going to be available open and able to use just with a slightly smaller number of people per hour and a new setup to how that room will work we're also fully anticipating hall of residence being available in october but again there will be a small number of people per block and have always some sort of social distancing lifestyle principles to make life as safe as possible. So your DMU future is all about making sure the experience is still great and one you remember, but also making sure the experience is safe and one that is fully in keeping with the rules and regulations as they come and go from the government over the remaining future period. And if you're an applicant, you'll have an email about this. You'll also get a phone call about this. And also the scheme involves various social activities. So later in July, there's an activity called the Big Night In, which is going to be a DMU house party um, with we're going to have a DJ, we're going to have a quiz, we're going to have all sorts of social interaction and competitions. And again, just like Tierney was saying earlier, it's a chance to meet people, chat to people, get to know people way before course starts and feel like you're part of our community now, not just waiting for everything to start in three months time. Right, guys, anything we need to add on clearing results day, the very first week or so of university when you first start? Anything we're missing? If you're still watching, first of all, well done, thank you. And secondly, do throw any final questions our way to keep us on our toes. Any more top tips 
Or should we let people go about their day? One at a time, please. Do not. Uh, <laughs> I guess if anyone has any questions that they would like to ask us individually, um, you can also get in touch with us via our website. So we do actually have a student chat on there, but we also have student advisors. So you can either speak to students or you can speak to staff. We're all available. I'll just pop, pop the link for you um, in the comments section right now. Let me get that up. And um, you can ask us your questions. They can be course related. We can try and help you. They could be more to do with student life, accommodation, even student finance. So if you've got any questions about student finance and how that works, do you get in touch with us? But that's the link there. So it's dmu.ac.uk forward slash student chat. Thank you very much. Right. Okay. Thank you for watching. Thank you for participating, guys, and sharing your pearls of wisdom. I feel like we've got to know a lot about each other in this one. I feel this has been quite an insightful session, you know, mm. not just facts and figures, but genuine experience and some tips. So hopefully it's been an enjoyable one to watch. It's certainly been a good one to participate in. Thanks so much for watching and have yourself a lovely afternoon and a good week. Thanks very much. And like I said, if in doubt, get in touch. Any question at all, phone or WhatsApp, we'll be there to support and get you the offer as well whilst you're at it. Thanks very much. Cheers, guys. Take care. See you later. Bye. 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 <laughs>